Hey everybody, Wendy Klinky from Blue Cat Studio. Welcome to day one of the Cherry Blossom Challenge. Today, we're gonna to be doing this large Sakura. So hello in Instagram land, hello in Facebook, on the Blue Cat Studio, let's paint with Blue Cat group, everywhere. So just really quick thing, if you are joining us via Facebook, there's a little link you need to click um, for StreamYard that says accept. So, and it just means that when you comment, when you come on, I can see your name and I can interact with you instead of seeing Facebook user. Now you're perfectly welcome to stay anonymous and be Facebook user, but come on now. I know you want to talk. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. So before, before we put the real design on, we're just gonna work on the background. So go ahead and grab kind of like your light turquoise blue color and go ahead and just get your biggish brush, whatever largest size you have. And we're gonna begin on, I'm gonna move some things around, huh? All right, there we go, okay. We're gonna begin on, on our, our piece of paper. So if you're here on Instagram, you see in one shot, if you're on Facebook, you actually see the split screen where there's a focus on the, the surface as well. I'm using watercolor paper. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just kinda start brushing some, Oh, good. I do have my paint water too. Just brushing some paint on, kind of going corner to corner for this one. And then maybe a little bit in the middle, just kind of creating some, some shapes. This is your opportunity. Whoa. What did I just do? What did I just do? Oh, I'm sorry. You guys, I just, <laughs> all right. I apologize. I clicked a button and I think I, I think I lost myself. So enter, we're all here. Add to stream. There, there we, we go. go. I, I would just like, like to say, say that sometimes I'm an idiot when it comes to technology. Hey, Marilyn. Welcome. Welcome. There we go. I got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what we're doing is we're just kind of adding color. Like it's, you know, you can really even just go ahead and do this kind of indiscriminately. It doesn't, doesn't necessarily matter. We're just trying to get some coverage. So since we're here and doing that, I'm going to also grab a little bit of the dark teal color um, or mermaid tail. It's a very dark teal. And just squeeze some on. And we'll go ahead and just kind of, whoops, go to town here. And so the goal is to, for the most part, kind of fill in all the white space, but we don't have to be perfect. And we're gonna go with a, a number of colors here to just kind of create that interesting and variegated background. Now, if you're using a canvas, you may have a little bit better luck. Uh, the last time I did this, it was on a more slick, um, surface and so it went a lot faster because this is watercolor paper it's very thirsty and it tends to sort of suck it up suck it up put a cup and maybe just a little here there. I guess I'll just use up the rest of my light turquoise and allow a little blending to happen here and there still got some white spaces so we'll come in with a little bit more color and then you're just getting that filled up to create a base. So one of the things I love about this is you end up with this just riot of color. Oh, I've got a funny shape, don't I? All right, let's do something with that. Yeah, you end up with like this fun riot of color that not doesn't even necessarily make sense. And it's perfectly okay. There we go. That's a little bit more random. I was looking a smidge boxy, but you notice I kind of worked corner to corner and just sort of begin to fill in. So now I'm going to take my chartreuse or this is the citron green from Deco Art Americana. It's kind of a fantabulous color. It's darn near fluorescent. I love this color. I love this color. And let's see if it does what it's supposed to. And you kind of bring it over some of the other colors. It really pops and creates these greens, but also these other bright spots. And so I'm going to just sort of use washes 
of this um, citron, citrus, whatever it is, just kind of get the last bits of the white spots and allowing it to overlap. Hey, Tammy. Welcome. Thank you for joining. I hope you're excited to be doing this. So I'm just going to put this out there. Those of you who are in the group have access to the traceable design. Those of you who are not in the group, um, well, you should join the group because it doesn't cost anything. However, it does require approval and um, I'm here doing this so I can't um, hit the approve button at present. So I apologize. You can either freehand it or catch it later. And if you join today, then you can definitely have access to the traceable design for tomorrow. Cause you know, we're doing this for not one, not two, not three, not four, but five days, which is kind of exciting. I have to tell you, just coming up with all the design being like, okay, so how do we keep it interesting? And how do we just change it up? And I got some like sun coming in, don't I? Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was really fun to dream up like, different ways to do cherry blossoms. This is funny, you know, I usually go live at night, but it seems that I've always been doing it kind of in the winter time and free daylight savings. And so I've never had sun kind of like coming in and like shining on my face before. It's weird. Holly, what's up girl? All right, so again, I'm just filling in the white spots with the green or the citron. And I absolutely just love how it mixes with the mermaid tail teal and the pool blue, or maybe it's Bahama blue. I don't really know. Unfortunately, that this one, I just threw it in a bottle ages ago and I, I lost track of what it was. So I'll we'll squeeze a little bit more and just kind of fill in. Now my paper tends to have a lot of texture. You may be sitting here like, come on, chop, chop. So I apologize. Maybe you're doing this inside a journal. I don't know. Hey, Julia, I see you on Instagram land. Is Ellen painting with you? Okay, so there we go. That's kind of our very base background. From there, um, oh, by the way, do you guys have hair dryers? You might wanna consider grabbing one. I like to have one on hand when I do tutorials more than anything, because I know you don't wanna wait for me to be waiting on paint to dry, right? So I'm just gonna blow this real quick. Okay, that was all it took literally. It's just a really quick, just dry off a bit. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush, maybe offload some of the paint on like a scratch piece of paper. You know, when we do this, we need, we need paper towel. I had everything set up except for the paper towel. Okay, go ahead and rinse your, rinse your brush. Should we give away a prize for who has the most disgusting paint water at the end? Or maybe the cleanest paint water at the end. <laughs> Anyways, I'm teasing, but. So after you've rinsed your brush, make sure that you really dry it off. That's gonna be important. Okay, so now that it's nice and dry, we're gonna move on to the stencil piece. So you've got a lot of options, right? So I always suggest this kind of funny, cheapy thing I got at the dollar store. It's really small, intricate designs. It was a buck and it has become my most favorite thing. But hey, guess what? We have this, all these other tools. No, I'm not drinking. That's actually a tool at our disposal. So if you couldn't find stencils, I just looked through like stuff I could find around the house. So I have some bubble wrap have some kind of that weird mesh like ribbony stuff that you can get from the dollar store or wherever for making wreaths. I have a pumpkin from the dollar store. And you're probably like, what? And I have some fishnet, which by the way, this is a wig cap. <laughs> but let me show you how this works. It's so cool. So we'll get some gesso. If you don't have gesso, hopefully you've got some like matte finish white paint. Um, or something, 
but I really love gesso. It's kind of fantastic. So I'm going to get like, this is just another big brush, almost the same. So you want to, you know, kind of remember where you put your gesso and where you put your white paint. So kind of spreading it out a little bit and keeping a thin coat on my, on my brush. So let's start with the fishnet and I'm sitting here talking and sort of Gavin. So if you need to run off and go find some weird things from around your house, you can. And if you have stencils, great. All right. So watch this. We're going to spread this out. Ugh. I need like three hands, but I've got it kind of spread. Now I'm just going to kind of see if I can better and dab, 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 dab some paint around. Whoops. Okay. My test version came out better. Maybe it wants a fishnet here. There we go. Let's try that again. I tell you, this does look cool when it works. So just dab, 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 dab. And if you just dab in one place at one time, then you get like this kind of funny dotted texture. Right. So we're not looking for fancy designs. We're looking for texture. We're looking for things that are kind of interesting. Here we go. Let's do some bubble wrap, right? We'll take some bubble wrap and paint right across it. You see where this is going? You can kind of get a sense of what that texture might sort of look like when I then take it and flip those bubbles over and press them onto my paper. Yes. And then you lift it up and now you have cool. Wow, where's my camera? Where? All right, here we go. All right, I have no idea how to do this. But look at that, I love that. And so I really wanna use my other stencil, but I'm kind of like, I, I, I sort of, I'm not sure that anyone was able to find this guy at the dollar store. So I don't want you to be looking at like, well, but mine doesn't look as good because I don't have that stencil. So guess what? We're going to do all the other things. If you have cool stencils, especially stuff with small designs on it, use it. Okay. Bloop. All right. Again, cool shapes for adding texture. Now let's try this guy here and hold it down. This guy is way less stretchy. So I think you'll behave better, but just going to gently kind of brush across it, maybe dab down, just bounce, 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 bounce. That sound is really going to drive me nuts. Lift it up. Then we have kind of like a screen mesh texture there. Now just pick some spots, right? I mean, whatever you've got, you've got burlap. We'll break out the wine bottle in a second. Okay. There was another... Oh, here's a good one. This one's fun. So I uh, was buying some chalk paint the other day to uh, paint this piece of furniture. And because they don't want that big old jar of paint to go <laughs> in shipping, they sent it oddly with a bunch of little square pieces of styrofoam. So I'm going to sit here and take my ruler because I have a metal edge and I'm going to kind of create an X across it and then maybe kind of make a star shape. Can you see that? Where, where, where's the camera? Right. Kind of dumb, but it's cool. I'm out of gesso, so adding a little bit more. Spread it out a bit because we don't want it to go in too thick, but oh yeah, here we go. So just kind of brush a little bit of that gesso onto that weird star shape. And now it should, when I press it down, create these kind of like almost like star stampy things. Right, so there's like a ton of things you can do, even if you don't have stencils. Like, just look around your house. What the heck do you have that might might do something weird? Urgh. Here, now I'll just make like a, a square bit here. I know. So this is, you know, this is kind of the fun part where there's no pressure. You know, mess around. Just get some stuff on your stuff. Get some stuff on your stuff. Totally descriptive, right? Stuff on your stuff. All right, next one, pumpkin. Oh gosh, I was about to finger paint, but I'm wearing nice clothes. So we'll go ahead and just kind of brush a bit of that gesso onto the edges of that pumpkin. Now, take it and just kind of roll the edges. And now I've got kind of like a little track. Looks almost like a spine or a fossil. I sort of love that. 
So again, there's no rhyme or reason. In fact, relax, go for the whole no rhyme or reason thing. That's like, that's what we're, that's what we're here for. We're having fun. Okay, here we go. I'm going to roll it one more time. I'm going to go along the edge here. Choo, 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 choo. I wonder if I can get seconds on that. Sloppy seconds. Only a little bit. Okay, so we've used household items to put fun stuff. Do I have anything else? Oh, oh yeah, okay, one more thing, I know. Again, I want you to feel like you have options and like you're not being left out. Water bottle, it has that ridged cap. I'm just gonna brush a light layer of gesso on the cap and then I can have to come right to the edge of my table here. Roll it across my paper. I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it in the middle here. Not really. Although it gives us kind of a funky line. Check that out. Can you see that? Kind of. I don't want to focus. I'm sorry. Well, there you go. So what we've done is we've added a bunch of, sorry, we've added a bunch of, of texture, right? It's, it's indiscriminate. So from here, there's my stuff so I can see what I'm doing. Let's go ahead and add a um, little tiny bit more color. So we're going to grab some of this um, quinac, uh, it's not quinacridon, dioxazine purple, just a small smush of it. And then you can go with, I forget if I said dark pink or quinacridon, pick one, doesn't matter, like a magenta or just something dark, bright, whatever. And again, if you're just joining us, feel free to comment, say hi, let us know you're here. I'm gonna, um, I'm not gonna bother to rinse my brush. I'm gonna grab just a little bit of that kind of pinkish color, bring it out. Now, one of the cool things about gesso is that you can get it wet and create these kind of fun, funky washes. Although we're not really going for a wash yet. It also creates interesting opaque coverage. So I'm just gonna add some more color kind of in zones. I'm gonna try not to cover up too much of my stencil, but maybe a little here and there. I mean, plenty of this stuff will end up being covered up and we're, that's fine. It's gonna be cool. So it's very dry brushed. It's just some streaks. Again, it's more texture, more going on here. And maybe a little bit of the purple, not rinsing my brush, just kind of grabbing. And I like purple sort of for, for framing and kind of creating some gravity around, around the piece. So a couple of lines and it doesn't have to be perfect framing. Just um, a little bit here and there at some of the edges. even a spot in the middle. Keep it random, keep it fun. I will almost look at that and think it looks kind of, where the heck at the camera, there we go. Kind of think it's like pretty all, all by itself. Okay, Instagram land, this is where we are so far. Again, this is just a base. And if you decide, hey, you know, that looks cool. You know, look at it upside down and right side up. Make a decision based on your own judgment about what you think. Personally, I think I had started with this as the top. I might at some point feel like I need to switch it over. Although then this will all be covered and I kind of like that line. So I don't know, it doesn't matter. We're gonna figure it out. Okay, oh, let's go ahead and rinse your brush. What we wanna do is get some of that gesso off because the gesso is very, very opaque. Okay. Now, another little squeeze of, oh, actually I have some. Well, if you, if you ran out of citron, go ahead and grab, go ahead and put just a smidge on and you can just sort of lightly brush it over some part of some of your white stamping somewhere. Now, if your white is not dry, obviously break out that hair dryer and give it a good blow dry. It won't take too long. Another thing I love about gesso is it dries very quickly. So even just creating a couple of stripes across that 
it allows some of that it so the gesso below kind of allows that pattern to pop and you can just it's almost like dyeing it a different color without having to try to paint it that color okay really small subtle bits but it's a thing go ahead and just offload some of my paint and so what we're really doing here is it's a slow layering process and we're probably going to be doing more and more layers and just kind of go with it here right, i'm going to move some of my junk out of the way so we're not completely crowded but you know what we do need i'm going to put some more of that dark pink oh no hot pink dark pink hot pink dark pink i don't know let's do let's do hot pink i'll put it over here by my gesso take my brush and kind of mix those together Oh yeah, you ready? Break out your wine bottle, wine glass, whatever you got. Give it a little coat right around that ring. Mm -hmm. You see where we're going with this, right? Stick it somewhere. Ta-da! So real small and subtle, but oh my gosh, it's cute. Camera, I'm so bad at this. There we go. You see that kind of? So it looks cool in person. So you can do that a couple more times. And if it's a full bottle of wine or you're drinking from it, then you best put the cork on before you do this, right? Now, not all of them have dots. Mine has these weird dots on it. And honestly, I'm so shallow. I just bought this thing because I thought it was a pretty color. I think I enjoyed the wine too, although I may have dumped like the second half of it out because I just couldn't get to it. Now we're going to go with the other side. We're going to go with the neck. So here we go. Just get a little bit of, well, why not? No, a little paint on it. And then just a little ring. Stick with that. Just kind of come in and place them. And if it gets a little sloppy, that's fine. Maybe have some of those rings interlocking. That's kind of cute. Ugh. And then, oh, I don't know. Here's a... There's a jar from the Dollar Tree. Just kind of getting him in the pink and then smacking him down. Okay. And some down here. So again, just adding interest, kind of changing it up, having fun. Burp. Okay, the bottle is not blocking views, good. So we've got some weird colors. I'm gonna run the blow dryer because this is very goopy. Marcia, thanks for joining us. I hope you're getting some painting in. All right. Uh oh, where'd it go? Oh, here it is. Okay. So next up, yeah, we're good. We're gonna go ahead and transfer the design. So if you don't have the design right now, um, go ahead and after this uh, thing is over, join the um, Let's Paint with Blue Cat group, and you can get the traceable design for free. Um, I am live here and all my devices are doing the thing. So I'm unable to go in and approve you right this moment. So word of me. Here. Okay. So go ahead and flip it over if you've got this and you can scribble on it. I'm going to go with some white chalk. Obviously I've used this design once already, but you know, and if you can't tell, sort of hold it up to the light so you can see where the lines are. 
and just kind of scribble over it with chalk. If you have graphite paper, your life is much easier. You can go take a quick bathroom break. Although I sometimes graphite paper worries me just because it can leave these really dark lines. And so when doing mixed media, I like the chalk because I can just lick my finger and wipe it off with like zero consequence. All right, and a little bit of coloring in the middle. All right. I have a lot of, a lot of chalk powder, so I'm gonna shake it off. All right, what we decide is top. Yeah. Let me see, is that guy gonna show? Or is it gonna not show? So sometimes, you know, if there's a particular pattern you like, it's worth looking at your piece to decide. So this thing I like, and I think if I put this here, I cover the entire thing with a flower and it won't show because that flower is gonna get pretty opaque. So I'm gonna put it here and I will still get to keep some of it. So go ahead and place your thing down. If you're working with an eight by 10 canvas, this paper obviously will be a little bit larger, but you can kind of find your edges. Now, so, you know, there's many ways to trace it. You can use like a stylus or something. I like the pencil because I can just draw over it and be like, I, I already drew that line. So go ahead and just draw it. Real simple here. And, you know, if you, if you don't have the traceable, go ahead and just draw a flower. And you can think of it as you almost do like a circle kind of in the middle. All right, I'm just going to sketch this. Don't y'all don't draw that part in, but you can see there's a circle and then you kind of create this piece, which mostly covers it the next piece, which mostly covers it. And then we kind of have these almost triangular shapes that are a little wiggly waggly coming out from the sides. And don't forget the little cleft right in the middle of the petal. Because cherry blossom uh, petals have little clefts. All right. So we have these things, the stamen. I'm not going to draw them in because you're going to paint right over them. So why waste your time, right? But I put them in the picture just sort of for your imagination and so you can remember. So removing that, we now have a nice chalk outline. Oh, you can't see that at all, can you? Um... Let me see where you go. Oh yeah, kind of. Well, what matters though, is that you in your world can see it and me in my world can see it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just put some gesso on. I could rinse my brush, but since this is going to be pink anyways, I'm not, but I will offload, just kind of wipe my brush on some scratch paper to get as much of the pigment off as I can, but it's not really worth rinsing. Now, if you're not feeling comfortable working with a big brush, then don't. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of follow those, those basic shapes of each petal. And I'm also gonna try and leave a small visual gap in between each shape. Now, I might decide that this brush is too big. In fact, I'm probably gonna just decide real quick that this brush is too big. Um, I might need to go down a size, but whatever. If you have a half inch brush, you'll probably be super happy with that. Much smaller than that, and you'll want to kill me because it would be taking forever to fill all this in. Yeah, let's try. I'm going to try downgrading one size. Yeah, so going with a half inch filbert, it doesn't have to be a filbert. Um, I started using filberts out of desperation and then came to realize that it's actually really great for edging. So I've got a little bit of pink in my, in my gesso. You don't have to, um, feeling a little lazy. Oops. I lost the cleft in that one. Well, it's okay. What we got going on here. Sometimes doing this sideways when you can't see. Okay. And then I'm gonna kind of create this center section. Yep. Again, slight outlines, so I can see the background a little bit, and that's fine. If we need to fill that in later, we can. 
but it helps us kind of keep that differentiation visually in our minds as we go to create this. Just grab the stem while I'm here. And if, you're, if your tracing didn't extend the stem all the way off the page, you have the option to extend it all the way off the page. It's going to be up to you. But what we're doing with this just so... Oh, I really can't see my work. Come on, girl. Okay. There it is. So you can also do this with pencil. And if you scribbled, like, you know, pencil on the back of your... Of your flower that's that's okay too I think I'm gonna kind of find my outlines here before I accidentally rub them off with my wrist or something silly and then it just becomes a, a matter of coloring it in or filling it in and so here's also why it's nice to have the printable because you can kind of refer back and make sure that you're mostly on the right track and if you're ad-libbing, go for it. Freehanding is awesome. I freehanded this the first time. But I figure if you're like, well, I want to paint the same thing when you painted them, I'd best give you a traceable so you can have something that matches. All right, so there's a cleft there. And next time I need to use like hot pink chalk. Can't see. So we've at least roughed in the outline, right? And even like this, just a sort of a white kind of milky flower, I, I think it's fun. And I also like it when you can see a little bit of the design coming through. Um, so it's up to you, sort of the, the, the level of finishedness that you eventually want to attain with this. Um, I'm obviously gonna teach it exactly the way I, I did it the first time. Um, but it, I always find that like many of the stages of, of the creation of these pieces is, it's kind of fun. And sometimes I get here and I'm like, man, I really like how that looks. I don't want to go further because I'm afraid of messing it up. And you know, one of my favorite quotes, and I'm going to totally butcher it, but the gist of it is, is um, you can't be a good artist if you're not, if, if you're afraid to do bad art or if you're not willing to do bad art. And so I kind of always remember that. When I stop halfway, I know it's not done, but I'm afraid to go further. My brain says, yeah, but you have to be willing to take that risk and make bad art and be okay with it for this one time. And often it really ends up being amazing and not bad art, but there's always that fear factor bit, right? Okay. So now we have a good base coat, just a simple kind of white, white flower with a little bit of outline. Go ahead and offload the paint and you probably want to rinse this guy off. And I'm going to also go ahead and blow dry this. So if you've got, um, yeah, if you've got your blow dryer, go ahead and go to town. Won't take long. Because it's gesso. It's very, very fast drying. All right, next step is to begin to build out the color. And so we're going to take our dark pink or quinacridone magenta, whatever you happen to have. And we're also going to grab a little bit of red. And this is a cool red. The one I'm using is called Cinnamon Drop by Deco Art Americana. And the pink I'm using is Razzleberry by Deco Art Americana. So, you know, when you look at them well, on camera, they're not that far off. Sorry. There you go. Um, Anyway, but they, so you see, I actually put them together side by side, all in one, one lip. So they're touching. I'm going to literally just kind of grab some of that and mix, 
and mix right in here to create a slightly more intense pink. I find this one pink to be just a smidge too blue for me. Um, and I just want like screaming intensity, like a little overkill. And I'm not worried about overkill right now because again, we paint in layers and that's something I want you to keep track of kind of in the, or keep in the back of your mind for this entire tutorial. We're going to be laying stuff down and there are going to be times when it looks awkward and weird and you're going to be like, I don't know. I don't know. Deep breath, have some faith and understand that we are working in layers. That's why we have the uh, hairdryer. All right, so down here at the base, we are painting, yes, the bottom of this stem red, or the ready pink. It's that kind of combo of the pink and red. And honestly, I, I did a little research and I went and looked at like all the cherry blossoms. Um, and turns out that little, that little part and into the stem is red. So we're gonna do that too. Because, I mean, among other things, it looks cool. All right. So kind of sticking with one side, I chose to do the upper portion of that or the, the left side of the stem, if you're looking down at it. Um, or the right side, if you're in Instagram world. I think the video is backwards. I don't really know. Julia, is the video backwards? Where it says paint with me or backwards paint with me. Okay, so now we've got those two bits of red kind of, or hot pink put in. It's a very intense color, I love it. In my world, it's really hard to get a color that's too bright. In fact, the whole world should be fluorescent. That would be like my happy place. Okay. Now we're gonna to begin to, to work our way out and create some of the inner portion of these petals, which is also going to be kind of a darkish pink. So because we've got a lot of paint on here and some very intense red, um, I'm going to offload some of my paint on a scratch piece, which also happens to be my handy dandy favorite sketchbook where I do all my art. And you know, when you're like offloading all this paint, you know what it's doing, you're creating like a new palette or a new canvas or new piece for doing art on. So grabbing a little bit more of the dark pink and we're going to kind of take it on its own. Maybe put some of the hot pink next to it. Yeah, that'll be good. And pull a little bit of that out and mix. Now the hot pink and the regular, the dark pink don't, they don't do quite the same kind of magic as the red and the dark pink, but it's still important. I'm just amping it up a smidge. I'm gonna come in just kind of right at the base of each of these petals on the inside and just kind of get lay in some Lay in some deep pink and go a little bit higher than you think is normal, right? So, you know, I know that the, the pink is really kind of in this zone right here. Um, sort of just the first little bit, like a fingertip or so. I'm going to go higher. It gives me a wider zone for blending and finding that perfect kind of, yeah, blend. I'll be dry by the time we come back to blend, but that's fine too, because there are a couple ways to do it. All right, just getting that in there. And then lightly, even though it's mostly not gonna be there and we'll be painting over it, we're gonna get some undertones of that kind of deep, hot, bright pink on the outside of the flower. How are we doing guys? I like that hot pink so much. I'm gonna add a smidge of it on top of that bright pink red here and just kind of just along the side. So I don't know if you, you caught that, it happened kind of fast. Um, if, you know, if you're on this camera right here, hello, it's pretty obvious because it's just this little section right here on the side and the side. 
Instagram people. I did it right here and then just a line here. It's fairly subtle, but it just kind of pops that just a smidge. And again, we're still kind of in rough mode here, right? I mean, but you can see where we're going with it, right? It's kind of exciting. Yeah. All right, let's get some real white paint versus the gesso. We really don't want to be using the gesso for this. We, we're, we're going to be better off to use white paint. Gesso is great for, you know, laying out the stencils, creating backgrounds, and sometimes kind of fading certain certain um, sections of a painting. Um, but it's it doesn't blend as well with paint as regular white paint. Okay, so. No rinsing the brush, just bring some of that white on into that pink mix we made earlier. Can you see that on camera? Yeah, you can. And we'll just come on down and kind of add the second layer. Yep, it's streaky. That's okay. Start ugly. Work with me here. Start ugly. You know, if some of the mixing occurs on, on, on canvas or on, on painting surface, that's okay. We're creating sort of just a good sort of stripe of color, some overlap. And we're starting to have layers. Again, it's real rough and we're okay with that. Rough is fine. And now adding more white. Bringing the rest of that white in, adding a lighter pink. And again, still kind of rough, rough tones here. And we'll worry about the blending in a minute. We just want to get the basics going. Uh, yeah, in fact, you can almost kind of create like a, like a little loopy, spirally, circly eight kind of figure eight to help blend between that medium pink and the dark pink and the lighter pink. And then here we're going to come out, grab those edges. Let's get the edges first. I need some more white paint in a second. And if this brush, you know, let's say the half inch brush feels too large for you, it is okay to change it up and go smaller. Okay, and then again, kind of just circling and almost kind of grinding or rubbing the paint in, and it does force some level of blending. Where's my white? There it is. Whatever I can find it. Keep grabbing some of that pink. Mixy, mixy, smidge of red, white. Okay. A lot of white. Hopefully, I got it. Yeah, it needs more white. All right, there we go. And keep going. And then, if you can, you know, rub it in. This one's gotten dry enough that I'm not sure I can, but that's okay. And so even if you don't feel very comfortable with blending, um, just learning how to do this level of kind of gradation and working with it is already going to put you a step in the right direction for learning to blend. Um, and it's, you know, it's kind of got that good enough look. However, you're here because I know you want to learn more, so we're going to keep going with it. Um, I'm going to grab some of that just plain hot pink and start to do a little blending kind of in that middle section here along the outside. So I chose the outer petal to do that blending with. And I literally just grabbed some of that hot pink. And I had my messy full brush of stuff. And I'm letting the white and all the pink that was already in there combine. And in some ways, I'm kind of massaging that paint like right onto 
right onto the, the right in. Yeah. Just kind of working it. So that's created a little bit more of a, a blend here. See how that is much smoother than the, than the prior version. I also need more white paint. And so what, since I'm here and this is still wet and I'm not rinsing my brush, I just dip in the white and come over here to the edges with my pink brush and the white. And then we'll sort of start to work in a little bit more. Um, I'm going to brush a little off on my palette because I've got a sharp edge going again. And now that I've got less paint on my, my brush, I can really kind of start to do a little further blending. And when I look at mine, I feel like I've got this sort of hot pink, cold pink separation. So I'm personally toning it with a little bit more of the hot pink because I like, I like hot pink. Yes, I do. And so now we've made a lot of progress on this particular petal. And we could go a lot lighter if you wanted. It's an option. But we're first just going to get kind of the basic things, and then we can tone them down from there. So oh, let's grab some of the hot pink and kind of come in here over top of this one. And the hot pink tends not to be, or it tends not to be very um, opaque. It tends to be fairly see-through. And so that's where having, having those base deeper layers already in place is really helpful. And you can grab kind of some of your pink white mix and just kind of keep reworking it. And then just some plain white coming in around the top. And so we, we do the blending, you know, lower down and then we do more white at the top and then drag that white down to blend with a pink because we really want the edges to be a lot crisper in terms of their lightness. Whoops, a little uneven there. And you can kind of just pull bits of that pigment through the wet paint all the way down. So I've got a lot of white here, not quite as much here. So I'm gonna add a smidge more just so that those petals look a little bit more lit up. Catching the light from the sun, right? Just kind of placing it and pulling strips of it. Yeah, that's working pretty good. And also for just to kind of keep these guys looking separate, a little bit more dark paint right along the edge of that guy. Oops, a little much. Okay. Yeah. Okay, next guy. I'm not even bothering rinsing my brush again. Hot pink, straight hot pink right over that. Deep pink. Not rinsing. Just kind of whatever paint you have, allowing it to kind of pull up. Again, these things, they go on in layers. And so while it sort of seems repetitive, the richness comes from the layers of paint. And sometimes it takes you a couple minutes to sort of get, get the tone that works for you. So you may want a more intense pink, like a crab apple, or you may want a subtler, paler, like sweet pink, like a, um, like a, a non-Japanese um, cherry blossom. So I just grabbed some white and went along that top edge. Getting some nice kind of streaky looks. I have not rinsed my brush in quite a while. And a lot of, allowing a lot of blending to occur right there on the page. And a couple of dark spots smack in the middle, which I'm not as big a fan of. So I'm going to keep grabbing some white to fill a little bits of that in. I'm dragging the lighter pigment down into the darker pigment and working a little bit quickly so I can take advantage of the wet paint because blending on dry doesn't work so well. Oops, I grabbed white. Shoot. Well, how are we going to use it? Add a little bit of here. 
because I don't want to rinse my brush. I don't want to offload. Sorry. Okay, hot pink again, coming in the middle. I realize I might be a crazy person with my 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 thing for hot pink. I'm really not a girly girl either, but oh my god, I just love hot pink. And again, my first skateboard as a kid was hot pink. And it was like a Paolo Peralta, which is the same brand that Tony Hawk skated for. So there. And it was not designed for girls. Okay, grabbing some white. So that one went pretty quickly. It's a little less intense on that side. And if we decide that we want a little bit more more oomph, we can add it. If we decide we like it better, then we can tone everything else down. I'm hoping you kind of are like, all right, I got this. So you can work at your own pace. I think you kind of have a sense of what we're doing. Um, I am putting focus on having the tips of these petals pretty light because again, the sun shines through them and it sort of washes or bleaches some of that pink out to the eye and it comes off as much paler. See what we got. Not like I'm painting, you know, so this thing looks good on camera, but it is interesting sort of what you see from the naked eye versus what you see on screen. And sometimes the screen actually really sort of points out to you where things have gone a little sideways or aren't even where your brain is kind of making up for it. So I'm grabbing some more hot pink, going to the final petal. Tra -la -la. Filling that guy in. I seem to be dragging a lot of white through that. And you know, once you get, you know, kind of into this section, if you want to get closer to those, allow the petals to get closer and start to fill in some of those gaps, you can. I do have a little bit of a plan for that, so don't don't get fixated on it. Don't feel like you've totally got to do it. There's plenty more to do here. I'm grabbing some white and pink. And I'm out of white again. I'm going to refill my palette. All right, so I have a nice blend of light pink and hot pinky here. Squeeze more white. the edge. And so the reason that we use the gesso, I was just thinking about this, um, to paint over this is it really also helps. It makes it a lot easier to, um, to pop the color out, uh, versus, I got too much paint on my brush. I got to offload it really quick versus trying to draw the flower first and then paint around it. It's very hard to get this free, loose, fun, slightly crazy background. Um, if you're trying to paint around a, a shape. All right, so I my, my brush was getting completely overloaded with paint and it was all starting to creep up here in the ferrule upper um, bristles. So I just used my scratch paper to kind of wipe some of that off. Didn't rinse it, just... Sometimes you need to be able to predict better what, what you've actually got. Okay, now this guy... Coming back and looking at them, I want to do a little bit more. In fact, I'm going to take that pink down even further on both of these kind of outer petals. Because I feel like, you know, when you look at a, a blossom, the inner petals are really red towards the center, but the outer petals, you don't see it as much. So we're going to just take that down a little. And just a little bit more blending. I know. Stay with me, guys. Also, one more drop of pink. Just a pinch. There we are. Whoops. All 
let's give that flower a, a quick minute. It's come along pretty good. We've got the center section. So uh, now's a good time to offload, offload the paint. And while we're here, let's rinse our brush real quick. Sorry, y'all sitting there looking at my arm, which looks really crazy on camera right now. I look like they're rolling around in dirt. I actually just got out of the shower, so I'm not sure what's happening there. And blow dry it. Let's, do, let's get this guy dry dry. out a little um maybe a smaller brush how am i feeling for this guy i think like the small round not your teeny tiny super skinny one but just kind of a small round should do so kind of this size you know if you look at the fingertip this is a super ratty one and um, that's all it takes you know nothing fancy and let's grab some, I'm going to just use the last of my hot pink to kind of add a little bit of pop to the red. I have very little, so I'm just kind of scrubbing the remnants on. Okay. I notice when I scrub those remnants on, there's still a slight red kind of rim around the top portion of that. Um, it's not like a, a perfect room. It's just kind of, I just gave it a little, a little bit of wiggle room, a little bit of space. Go ahead and grab some orange. Oh yeah. So when you're dealing with little bottles like this, like the craft paint it's really important to shake them. Um, if they've been sitting around for a while, the color or the pigment and the medium or sort of the liquid goo that the pigment sits in, which makes it paint versus powder, um, tends to separate. And so you end up with like a sludge on the bottom and this nearly clear, slightly tinted stuff on the top. And you really can't paint with a tinted, like with the clear stuff. Um, so shaking it up is good. So just taking some orange and plunking it in here. I'd love to say add white, but then you end up with this weird peach. So I'm going to grab just a pinch of yellow to tweak that a little, so a little bit of orange, a little bit of yellow. Yeah, so just slightly lighter. So if this is my pure orange, just my yellow, uh, kind of well, something slightly in between. Just kind of coming on top of that. And you're just creating some texture with your with your orange paint, lightening up that center a bit. But we also really want that dark tone to be peeking through. So we're not just covering it over. We want the color peeking through. And that's kind of the whole concept behind all of this is we've got color peeking through. And since I'm here, I'm going to add just a smidge of that orange right in on the stem. And, you know, chances are it'll get covered over, but I want to put it there for now. It's kind of fun. Maybe a smidge kind of right in here. So even a little bit on the, um, what is that thing? The head, the thing. Okay. So we've made pretty good progress. And if you're joining us just now or a little bit late, the replay will be available. So, you know, you can kind of see the end of this and be like, oh, I totally want to do that. You can join the Blue Cat, uh, Let's Paint with Blue Cat group, and you can get your hands on the traceable design so that you don't have to try to freehand this. Sweet. Okay. So now that we're here, um, let's get a little road blow dry. Rinse your brush while you're at it. Like multitasking, blow drying and rinsing. Grabbing a little bit more of the dioxazine or dark violet purple. Oop. 
shake it with the lid on, not the lid off. I'll use up the stuff on my thing. All right, so purple, especially this deep violet, it's the color of shadows. Like it's this fun, sneaky, amazing color. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and kind of come around right at the edge of the center of that flower. And we're gonna go really light touch here, really light touch. So I keep taking my, um, my brush and just kind of twirling it in the paint, trying to get a tip. This is a super beat up old kind of dead brush. Um, it still works. So don't feel like you have to have fancy supplies. I have fancy supplies somewhere. I just forgot to use them. I'm just kind of coming and outlining that, that center piece, but then we're also bringing some of that purple kind of up in between the petals, not all the way, but just go a little bit of the ways of kind of where it's that intense pink. And then you can even bring a couple of, a couple of little swooshes into the petal. See how we did that there? Yeah. So Facebook folks, I'm lifting it up for the camera, mostly for the people on Instagram, since they do not have the benefit of, of, of two camera vision. All right, I'm gonna just come around. Got a little bit more here. Okay, keep it real simple. But that dark color just adds a smidge more depth. And then you could even come in and do little tiny dots of it a little right at the edge. Gently, not super crisp, but just a little bit near the, the edge of, the, of this front petal. Again, it just alludes to there being a shadow cast by the petals and shadows kind of in the creases. And notice that my lines are not lines at all. There, it's kind of a dab, 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 dab. Next bit we can do here is come in underneath, kind of add some under those petals, kind of creating those shadows that they may cast. Be a couple of lines up into it. I'm going to bring a little line down along the side here. I know my shadow's a smidge backwards. I probably should have it down here, but whatever. It's cool. I'll just, yeah, no, I got, I got other plans for that. And then we'll take another little purple line kind of right under the cup of this piece, kind of the separator. Okay, get very, very light. You want it to be a little bit see-through. That helps add some dimension, a little bit of shading here on the bottom of that guy. Hopefully that, that made sense. So it's here and here, a little bit more up the sides. Okay, baby step in our way. It's still a little weird right here. We'll, we will bring it, we'll bring it back to where it needs to be. Um, seeing, I wanna bring this up a little bit more. A little bit more. Maybe a smidge of separation here too. Just a little. Keeping it subtle though, best effort. Okay, and now that we've done that, I've got a lot of extra purple and I like purple, so I'm just gonna kind of screw it. Let's, let's finger paint. Just a little bit of that purple and let's use it, right? Finger paint. This is so cathartic. Yeah, I like this tone even better than that kind of washed out. So the gesso sort of took the oomph out of this purple when we did it last time. So I'm really happy to just be using the pure purple now. Just make sure that you stay off of the flower proper. Keep your fingers on your painting. Was that fun? I hope that was fun. Hopefully you've got some paper towels, wipe your fingers off so you don't make too big a mess. Blow dry. Perfection. 
buff load as much of your purple from your brush as well. Go ahead and give it a quick rinse. So when you're using the hairdryer, one of the silly little things, which I mean, once I say it, you'd be like, well, duh, but you should be cognizant of it anyway. Um, make sure that your um, paintbrush that's got paint on it isn't anywhere near the stream of the hairdryer or you might dry the paint on your brush. It's one of those dumb little things, but dear goodness, it matters. All right, if you haven't got any chartreuse on your palette, smack just a little on. And we're gonna come up and get the underside of the stem. Because that's the other color that it is. It's just this sort of this yellow citron green and red. I'm kind of bring it up along here. So it, I feel like that orange helps the green transition a bit. Otherwise, the green and the red are a little, little jarring and they kind of make a brown. So sometimes that orange just helps. All right, I need more green. I'm going to go to town with a smidge more here. It's getting a little sticky. Even some up a bit. Okay, and then we'll come in on this side, the lower portion. They have this wonderful pigmenting. I really love it. Let's get some of that green on the portion of the, of the cup of the flower. I don't know what it's called. That's what I'm calling it because it kind of is like a cup. It's a thing that everything grows out of. Look at that. Now you can just kind of offload some of that citron somewhere on your on your plate or your your painting if you want. Um, okay, pretty sure I suggested that we have white paint pens. Shannon, you know why don't you do this with a fine line? Don't hate me. If you have a smaller brush, now's the time to get it. So go ahead and rinse your larger one. We're now going for a fine point. So that guy's really tiny, especially if you look at it. See that little teeny tiny? Here's my fingernail visa that, right? And here's the, the brush that we were using, the blue one. Pretty significant difference. Okay. I'm gonna do this between sort of that chartreuse green and white. So I'm going to squeeze a little bit of white right here next to the chartreuse. And now I, I don't much like mixing with the tip of this brush. So I, I might use the tail to kind of mix some of the green and chartreuse together. Or green and white. Chartreuse and white. That's what I'm trying to say. Now the reason I'm mixing the white is that it'll go on in a single coat. So I'm gonna just gonna wipe that tail kind of right here on my painting and then maybe smudge my finger over it. And if you don't wanna do that, you don't have to, but you know, we can. So getting, getting some paint on that little ton of brush. And we're gonna now begin to create the stamen. Yeah. So starting, we'll start kind of down, down here close to the petals. I'm gonna kind of create like just little pulls like so. A little pull out. And make them about an inch or so. And they're going to kind of curve towards the center. So if you're starting on this side, it's going to also kind of curve up. And so they're going to create almost that sort of like lotus, lotus look. And we're starting low. And I promise you there's going to be more, so keep them somewhat uniform in length for this particular section. We're building it. And then we're going to mess with the imagination and do some more stuff. Okay, so now that we've done that, kind of coming in in between at a higher junction in that thing, create some more. And if these become more feathery and more wispy, awesome. Make them a little taller. I'm running out of paint on mine. I have to rotate this one. This one's harder. So you want these to be, each one of them is their own, is the same similar length, but because they're placed differently on the center, they're gonna appear different lengths. We'll just 
do a couple lower ones that just kind of come up. You see how that's kind of forming? Oops, clunk. Sorry. A little center stamen. Stamens is a, the pollen thingers. All right, so from here, I'm just circle in that pale green, and we're going to come in and start to drop dot at the ends of all of these things. So let's first dot all the all the things. And then we're going to talk about imaginary things, and we're going to dot those too. But first, we'll get the ones we got. Creating the structure. One more. Boop, boop. So we got a thing. And so now you can kind of look at it and be like, all right, well, what do we got going on? It still seems very sort of single layered. So you can come in and now start to kind of add additional dots in that don't actually have stamen. Try not to create a pattern, but do try to kind of come in and in, you know, sometimes have them stand alone dots and sometimes have them slightly overlap some of the other stamen that are in there. And just kind of place them about so they start to create what seems like kind of an even crown of pollen holders. <laughs> I wish there was a word for them. Pollen holders. Julia, don't tease me about that later. And then a few dots maybe even in the middle here, but again, we're trying not to create a pattern. We want it to have a little bit of randomness. Whoops. Keep going on either side of this, and I need to put a dot in the middle of it there. So you now have some kind of fun stamen. just by dotting and dotting and dotting and dotting and dotting and dotting. Now, if you wanted, you could come back in with some yellow or some white to kind of add some interest. It's going to be up to you. I think a couple more out here on the sides is going to be good. Whew. Yeah, I'm going to just kind of wipe some of my color here and smudge it because I can. Okay. Here's where things get kind of fun. We're going to do some more layers. A small amount, and we're going to finger paint because I know that's totally what you want to do, right? Yeah. Actually, you know what? I love this. I want a little bit more. I'm sorry. Just like, hey, rinse your breath, blah, blah, blah. But let's put a little bit of that kind of highlighty pale white chartreuse mix on the underside there of the stem right here. So now it really looks like the light is getting, it is coming through and, and, and lighting it up. It's creating almost like a level of translucence. Okay. And glow from the sunlight. Oh, I love it. That's the thing. Sometimes when you're, when you're doing these things, like I find like my, just let my imagination sort of go like, all right, what do they look like? What are the things that I see? And sometimes I really just have to go look at, at, at like pictures. Um, and it takes time to learn to notice these things. Um, and then to figure out, well, okay, well, how do I make it actually look like that? How do you do it? Um, but here's one of them is you just take that color and lighten a little bit with white, or if you're adding shadows, sometimes the purple is amazing, especially when you're going with super vibrant colors like this. Okie dokie. Um, right, so we just poured some gesso. I'm going to go back to my, my filbert and I'm going to do a wash. So I'm going to go ahead and get my, my brush wet. It's wet, like it's leaving some water on my hand, but it's not like horribly drippy. So just grabbing a corner of the gesso and kind of bringing it onto my palette and kind of working it in. So you can see on my brush, it's sort of like watery. It's not solid. This part always just gets me a little bit. So I'm going to kind of come over here and I'm going to kind of put some, some gesso wash in a few spots. 
Why? Um, I don't know, because we can. Um, and don't be afraid to try this because we can then apply color over it and where that gesso is, it just gives it that little extra, extra pop. And sometimes I'll use the gesso to actually lighten an area so that um, other parts really come into focus. Um, we've got such intense colors going on here. I don't really need to do the lightening, but like when I was doing this, this piece over here, um, these were all the same color, and so when I went around it with a white gesso wash, um, it made all the, the colors in the backgrounds for this particular thing go pow! And then, of course, the, the, the paint pen made a big difference, too, by outlining it and then adding bits of, of color and shading. So, so we're just kind of, you know, toning, doing some things. Oh, well. Because I want some more mermaid tail coming in here. Okay. So again, you can be like, oh, I like that. Oh, I don't like that. It's going to be up to you. We are actually getting pretty close to, to finishing up. So stay with me. Sometimes it feels like there's a lot that goes into this and there is that you can play. And my, really, my hope is that as we do this, you're learning ways to approach a piece of art. Um, like you've learned now how to do a background. You can just pick whatever colors that, you know, suit you on that day and do it, right? You know, I'm going to try a wash here with this as well. We'll see how this goes. So I rinsed my brush because I didn't want the gesso on it. I got it wet and I brought it into some of that mermaid tail. I'm going to do just a little kind of mermaid wash on some of these white spots where I did my gesso. Little bits. Now I want some intense mermaid. I want some intense. So a little bit here. Kind of lose on my lose on my bubbles, my bubble wrap dots. That's okay. So that's the other thing is when you're doing something like this, don't don't allow yourself to get too attached to your various and sundry marks. Now, if you're like, but I really like them, guess what? You can come back and add some more. Let's do that. Let's do that. Was that white paint or gesso? I don't remember. Yeah, we'll just add some more because they were fun. We liked them and we miss them. Boop. Boop. Okay, I'm happy. And in fact, what's interesting is we did that wash. It was still wet. When you place the bubble wrap on it, here we'll get some that has no paint on it right here, and stick it on the wash and then lift it up. Oh, it didn't show so well there. But there's a couple spots here where it actually removed the paint some. And so now we have these kind of like the white dots here and then the green is showing underneath. Um, so that becomes really kind of interesting in this zone right here. Again, it's real subtle stuff. I personally find paintings like this fun because it you create this this odyssey for the brain to follow and to look at and you know you can gaze at it one time but then the more you look you sort of see all these other things so coming back to our mermaid mermaid tail teal deep teal peacock teal whatever you want to call it whoops and get my fine liner gonna add a couple of little details oh we oof we're a little wet hold on i gotta dry Okay. Now we're adding some odd colors and they're going to add depth. These are important. So a little bit here, that teal. A couple of little spots in here. Whoops. It's a little bit too uniform and stripey, but whatever. It's fine. A little bit up in some of the other shades. So sometimes you can really bring really bring something to life by having a, a clashy contrasty color added in and look at that now it's just like the shadows are alive like in traditional painting and i remember like you know in arts well not in art school but in high school doing art class 
they were like, oh, you want to shade it, add black. But they end up like with this like boring, sad mud. And while it still works, okay, so I'm adding some of this teal, just kind of dotting it around kind of in the shadows and some around like the, the outer edge and little bits, not too much in the center of the, of the thing, but kind of right at the edge there. Just a little, just a little something. Hints, kisses, not full-fledged bits of teal, but little, little something that just catches the eye for a little bit. I was saying something, I lost it. That's okay. Then, you know, you can, you can create some kind of stair-steppy stripes if you want to add some pattern. Well, not pattern, but, you know, interest. Your fine liner, some sort of parallel lines. It's going to be up to you. I don't think I had this in my other one, but I'm here and I can, so I'm doing. Maybe you don't have to. Oh, I said that, huh? Swink. Sometimes just a little something makes it interesting. Just keeps it, keeps it going. And you know, I'm going to use my fingers here and do a little smudging in this zone. A little smudging in this zone. Right over that thing I just did. Yes. Mm hmm That's how we do. Go with it. And some of this and some of this. So I grab some teal and the white. And I'm finger painting. I hope you finger paint a little bit too. I feel like it's just so cathartic. All right, good enough. Rinse. Now, if you were feeling really crazy, you could crazy. You could even add some red or whatever. But again, just be kind of cautious. I'm really loving like these little bits of like, you know, wine glass circles. All right, let's blow dry it, and we're gonna come in with our white paint pen and call it a day. time using a white paint pen while you're blow drying or while you're waiting it is time to start shaking the crap out of this sucker shake 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 now i love this artistro um one i got it on amazon i've got a whole box of them um because i can see through it and i can see if my paint is separating or not so here's an example of a color one just sort of to, to show but can you see how there's sort of the opaque and then there's like this colored stuff like, I know that this needs shaking up. That's why I like the see-through ones, because I can just sit there and, you know, shake, shake, shake. So we're not using the pink. I just wanted to illustrate. Okay, so we're going to do this. We're going to multitask. We're going to blow it dry. And we're going to shake our pen. Okay. The pink is mixed, which means the white is mixed. Bang. So next up, if this is a new pen for you, again, more priming needs to happen. You're probably going to need to kind of squish the ink in or squish the, the tip a few times. That is, in fact, what the little dot on the end of the lid is for, is for that. Sometimes it's a little bit friendlier than trying to do it on your work surface. And it, it's just, it's just gentler. Okay, so we're going to do some outlining and we're going to do some, some spirally swirlies. And all right, I'm just going to start here and I'm going to do a spiral because I can, because it's fun. I'm going to make it a really big one. And it's going to just go off the page because, because, because maybe another one here. I think. And then another one here. Now this is a wide tip one. You can do wide tip or fine tip, whatever works for you. The wide tip goes real fast. And then maybe we'll do something over here. That just sort of sneaks off the, off the page. And then maybe one more in this zone right here. Sneaks off the page, a little bit disconnected. Looks like a snail. And maybe I'll do something over here. Oh, a little something here. And then 
might be a bigger one that kind of collides with all of those. Now I'm giving my flower a little bit of room, right? Because we got more going on and we'll get to that. I'll just get those spirals in first. This guy can stop here and we'll do another guy like right here. You guys can see what I'm doing? Yes, yes we can. Okay. Somehow I just feel a little on the dumb side when it comes to doing these, so I need <laughs> and need to be able to turn my paper. Okay, next up, we are going to outline a little bit on the inside of the petals. I'll just give it a definition, and if you're like, no, no, I want it, that's fine, you don't have to. It's kind of fun. Helps clean it up a little bit. You could even go straight to the edge and Clean it up that way. Doesn't really matter. Right at the edge or slightly inside. Both methods are valid. You don't even have to be 100% consistent. Isn't that nice? I like that part. Not consistent. Makes life easier. Okay. So maybe a little extra emphasis with the white kind of to create that cleft or emphasize the cleft in the um in the blossom and the petal. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, cleft there. Okay. And then we'll kind of come around the outside of this guy. And then create the stem. And we're close, but we're still not there. So the final piece, and I know it's weird, but I feel like it actually really made this particular project, was creating a second line, like a, a 16th or an eighth, or I don't know what that is, but you know, like half to a third of a centimeter out from the design so that you can see background. And you're just kind of outlining and framing the shape. Now what I like about that is it kind of hyper focuses your brain on that darker line acting as the outline and kind of gives it that sort of designerly modern fun feel. And that right there, oh, there's my lid, is the thing that you can innovate and change up as much as you like. But you know, when we do a comparison, it was the original in the sketchbook, and then there's the one we just did. Ta -da! Pretty darn similar. Obviously, a few you know differences here and there. This one I used the really fancy stencils because I'm just playing and that one stupid square so easy but this one we used all the, the easy to find home materials um if you had stencils you used them but i wanted us all on equal footing and so there it is now you could also if you felt like it you know you could add some little white wisps to a couple of those stamen you don't have to it kind of looks good though so we And then, of course, you need to sign your art and take credit for your amazing hard work. Um, personally, it's one of those small things, but the world out there is a little bit crazy and people like to take your images off the Internet. So when I sign my work, I tend to sign it somewhere that's integral to the painting. So if you are also feeling like, hey, I don't want someone taking credit for my work, sign it where they can't see it, where they would have to cut half the painting off in order to get rid of your signature. Small little thing, but, and again, if this is for you and you're never gonna post it on the internet, that's fine too, but you know what I would love? If you would take a picture of your work and post it on the Let's Paint with Blue Cat site or post it on your own page and tag Blue Cat Studio, because I gotta tell you, it just, it's so wonderful to see like what you guys have done and, you know, put it in the group. We want to be proud of each other. It is a private group so that we can support one another and give each other kudos and feedback and 
all the things and it keeps all the haters out. So anyways, I hope you had fun tonight. I know I did. And now I have a piece I can frame, unlike my sketchbook, which I would have to tear up. And uh, we're going to do this again tomorrow night. Tomorrow's picture is, oh, it's the chinoise one. Let me see. I think it's in here. Um, and it's a little different. Let's see here. So yeah, um, 6.30 p.m. Oh, oh, oh. So for those of you who aren't in the group yet, the only way you're going to get to do the Eiffel Tower is by joining the group. You've got to join the group. All right, let me see if I can find we're going to find the chinois one. Not exactly, you know, organized when it comes to painting in here. I just sort of pick a page and go for it. Well, it's in here somewhere. I'll post it on the Facebook. On the Facebook. Wait, is it here? Is it here? There it is. Okay. So this is the one we're doing tomorrow night. That'll also, oh, hey, hello. You can see it better. And so you can really go to town on this one and have some fun. So anyways, thank you so much for joining. We will see you guys tomorrow. We're doing this for five days straight. So there'll be all kinds of good stuff to do. And uh, love you very much. And yeah, have a great rest of your evening. Bye. All right, here, see if I can figure out how to turn these things off. Because, you know, that's not my strong suit. Okay, bye.